Hey YouTube, been forever. Um, I've been trying to make this video like three times, and so there's probably like some things I want to say that I'm not gonna be able to say because I'm not sure if I'm writing this video if I already said them. So that makes any sense. But anyway, um, just to let you guys know, there's been some changes. Well, uh, praise y'all for that. And uh, like how it says <laughs> in the scriptures that through Yeshua stripes we are healed. And uh, in Romans chapter 1 where it says when you give your life to, to God that he takes care of the fine details of trying to repair what you've done against and against him and to fix you and to heal you spiritually. So I found, well, my faith, you can see, is going to a point it's not as broad as it used to be. The fat redistribution has changed as well. I don't have it across my brow anymore. Um, my face has kind of went in, same with my eyes. It went back to the way it was before, <laughs> which is nice. I can't, oh, oh sorry guys. <laughs> sorry, I hate this stupid phone. I need to get my computer fixed. But anyway, um, so, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to adjust this. I hate this. Anyway, so in the past seven months, um, obviously, see, I've grown my hair, um, lost some weight. <laughs> some, I was looking at some of my videos, dang. <laughs> I was a big one. <laughs> Still slightly, a little more chunky. Not so big ones, but chunky. But uh, anyway, um, praise, praise God for all the wonderful things he's done in my life. Um, allowed my face to go back to what I was. I still grow hair in here because I allowed myself to be on testosterone for three years. So you're going to have your problems with that. So still have that. I have to shave like every other day. Um, my voice is not as deep as it used to be, but it's still not as feminine as it was. But that's fine because I carry that as my testimony as well. Um, guys, I cannot tell you how much I give glory and love to my father for changing my outlook on life for changing me, the true change, and accepting every single day as a gift from him, and to accept his love, and to accept his mercy, and I know that only his mercy and his grace, his grace is the gift to my life, that he saved me. He saved me from a spiritual death, from, I can't, I don't even want to think about it. But guys, what I got to say is that I'm actually getting some uh, male prospects, which is kind of nice. Um, it's wonderful because I have an attraction towards men, and my attraction towards females is becoming less and less and less to nothing. Uh, sometimes when women at work kind of hit on me, it kind of grosses me out a little bit. It doesn't forgive me. It doesn't gross me out. It makes me uncomfortable. And but when I think of the acts that I used to do, that's what grosses me out. Because um, I know that my actions are not glorifying my father, and these things are done in his sight. So, I am very ashamed. I, you know, guys, I want to set a plea to you. Let me check this time real quick. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I want to send this plea to you um, because I don't know if you guys have been looking in the news, but there's a lot of stuff going on that lines up straight with prophecy, straight up with prophecy. And, um, you know, it has to do with earthquakes in various places, the odd uh, weather patterns, the rumors of wars. Right now, the U.S. unofficially declared war with uh, Iran, Russia, and China, so World War III is on its way. Before you know it, it's going to be the one world government giving the mark. And after the mark, it's going to be killing off Christians, Muslims, anyone who doesn't belong to the faith that they, you know, that that they create. So sooner or later, choices are going to be made. So before that time happens, right now we all have a grace period. We all do. Even me. I'm getting prepared as much as I can spiritually to to make the right decisions when they come. Um, I've been trying to be more stern and uh, look at myself more to make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, watching how I speak, how I act. Um, you know, all day long, brothers and sisters, we could have conversations back and forth about your side and my side. And, you know, I've argued for your side before. I know all the arguments, and I thought I knew all the proof. But it doesn't come compared to any of the truth that you get with the Father, with God. He is God. Man's laws, man's, you know... Like I was saying, you know, um, there was no king in Israel, so they all did what was right in their own eyes. 
Not all the time can you believe everything that a man publishes. Not all the time can you believe everything a man says, because there are principalities and there are powers behind each man, whether it be good or bad. And you can't always take at face value anything our government gives us, because they have their own hidden agenda. That's what I'm saying is seek him. Seek his face. Seek the Father, and he will give you truth. He's given me truth. I, I'm accepting the woman who I am, who he made me to be. And I've never been happier. And sorry, I have to check the time again. <laughs> YouTube is very strict about its time. But anyway, I've never been happier, guys. I'm not even playing. There's a sp spiritual fulfill uh, or fullness. <laughs> the spiritual fullness I can't describe to you. And this this uh, awareness that has come over me. And what I realize is that in this day and age, since we're so close to prophecy, is that there will be scoffers. And that's a lot of people that actually found on YouTube that didn't agree with my ideas about not agreeing with this whole homosexual agenda that's been pushed upon us. And I mean shoved down our throats, shoved down our children's throats. I had an epiphany the other day when I was speaking with my good friend Nick, my brother in uh, Yahweh, and I realized that when I first went to high school, that's when all this stuff started. Um, I went to high school and people pushed this idea on me, teachers um, pushed this idea on me of that I was gay because I didn't have a boyfriend like in my 10th grade year or whatever, my, my uh, sophomore year. Um, I, was, uh, I wasn't really curious, per se. I didn't really find women attractive. I found this one girl in my class and she suggested she had a girlfriend. I was like, well, girlfriend? I go, like, a girl girlfriend or, like, a girlfriend? And she was like, my girlfriend. She goes, like, we're dating. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand this. I go, well, and I would ask questions. Well, she assumed that because I was asking questions is because I was questioning myself. I was trying to understand her, but being at an impressionable, impressionable age that I was in, I was like, well, this seems to make sense. And um, it all just got out of control from there. But it was shoved down my throat. I actually found boys pretty attractive, actually. But then I trained my brain to not. And now I'm at a point where, like I was said, I feel like a like a heroin addict that's trying to get over the fact that, you know, sorry, I'm seeing it anymore. <laughs> trying to get over the fact that, you know, I was addicted to a certain substance that's detrimental not to my health, but to my spiritual health. And uh, I'm trying to get past that. But like how I said, anyway. Okay, so approaching the time. Um, the thing is, guys, is that, like I said, the time is coming where we need to make choices. And you have to, it even says in Ephesians, uh, 6 through 19, I like to go through, it's where it talks about where we don't wrestle with flesh and with blood, but against principalities. We're not wrestling with men here, guys. You know, we're in a spiritual warfare. We're born onto a, a battleground. And you have to really realize which side you want to be on. And there's only one side that wins. Only one side. I can tell you, do your, your research and look and see that there is truth in the, the fellowship, in, in, in Messianic Judaism. That's the closest on tap source, excuse me, that you could get to God. The true God. Not these other religions that splash their own pagan beliefs into or, or pick and choose from the Bible what they want to follow, what they want to believe. And, you know, there are going to be false prophets and false uh, truths and people who are going to lie to you and like, look at that, that pastor, if you could call him a pastor, that said that homosexuals should be rounded up in an electric fence and then killed. I think he said something towards that effect. You know, he will answer doubly when he stands before the Father, because one, he's a representative for him. Two, the Father doesn't believe in such things. He loves the sinner. He died for the sinner, not for the sin. When he died on that cross, he basically, instead of a, a, a pass that went straight to death, spiritual death, now there's a fork in the road. And we all can make a choice. And now is that time. Now is that time. 
I ask you more than ever to think what is more important. You know, living in your flesh and satisfying your flesh and, you know, you think you're this and that and, and redefining who you are and it seems so profound and just so, I don't know, like, you're, you're, you're redefining who you are and all this good stuff, but he's watching all of us and taking account of everything. I just ask you guys, now's the time to just accept him into your heart, accept him into your life. Just ask for forgiveness for the things that you've done wrong or against him and, and accept his love. That's all he wants to give you is love and protection from these things. He doesn't want you to have to experience what's, what's to come. We're all going to have to be in it, but the difference is, is that the ones who believe will be calm during the storm. I'm just asking you, brothers and sisters, now is the time to accept Yeshua, Jesus, into your heart and ask him to be your savior and to know that he died for you and for your sins, and that all he wants is for you to be saved and to live. Because think that this, this, sorry guys, this amazing, wonderful, all-knowing, all-powerful God that created us from the dust, that created the very dust that created us, everything obeys him, and he thought of you, he thought of me. Our personality is how we're going to act, how we're going to talk, how we're going to be. And I'm not saying our behavior, guys. I mean, you know, the way we smile and we laugh. He's always here to encourage us and to push us forward. Just make your choice, brothers and sisters, this time. All right. I hope that God blesses you and that early Shabbat Shalom. And uh, God bless.